something that is core to um, our model here is our passion-based learning pillar. Um, it's something we take a lot of pride in, in that children are taught academics and content through their individual interests. Um, and I'd love to hear a bit about what you've experienced with your two students here and how you feel this alternative education model makes them more eager and engaged with the school and just being excited to be here. Yeah, definitely. Well, I went through LAUSD, so that's the main school district in Los Angeles. I think it's like the second largest in the country. And so I just remember, like I think it was 11th grade history class, like AP, AP US history or something. Anyways, it was just the teacher just talking at us and I still have like a callus on my middle finger from just like writing yeah. notes all year yeah. long. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's similar. like a, that's the old system. So I was just like writing and then at a certain point, I'm like, I don't care. I'm not writing this anymore. It's in the book, like what are we doing? It just, the educational system that I went through literally made no sense. I didn't, I felt challenged in the wrong way. Like, okay, can you write nonstop for an hour about US history? But it was never tied into what I cared about. And that's, I just think that's like a complete lack of vision of the school system. And then also I kind of, as I got older, I just felt bad for the teachers that were having to like regurgitate the same thing. It's how could it even be exciting for those teachers? So that was my experience. And then with my kids now, you know, that they get that my son, he's like obsessed with whales. So he's learning things about the ocean and different types of fish and the environment and they're learning math through that that's really cool and then the teachers let me know even though you know we kind of have a sense of like what they're interested in but the teachers and I are having a conversation where like hey your son is really interested in whales that's his passion so then like as a kind of a united front they're teaching him stuff in school and then I can do extracurricular activities like go whale watching with him and really like lighten that up and so those are just experiences I never had and they love it and so so that's kind of that and then with the two, because I have two kids, seeing them kind of interact and feed off of each other and have conversations about, you know, what their passions are, and then they'll ask me what what are my passions, which kind of, in like my busy schedule, just actually recently, my daughter was like, oh, what are your passions? And mm -hmm. one of them, which is like a long time ago, was building like furniture and stuff. I used mm -hmm. to do woodworking. So over the last week, I built like a like a bench with them, and then my son is like obsessed with um, sticks. And they're lying all over the house. So then I combined my passion with his because mm -hmm. he's like loving nature and collecting sticks, but they're like cluttering up my place and getting a little annoying. So I was like, all right, well, how can we combine these? So I built him like this custom stick holder, okay. so he can, like with little holes, so he can put the sticks in. So we're just starting to blend all the different passions. And then my daughter's like obsessed with drawing, so we decorated it. So it, that it's just like interactions you would never have. Yeah, it's so, beautiful. Yeah combining all mm -hmm. of your passions even if it's not what your day job is it's mm -hmm. something that and I think it's good to have your children as a reminder that you can have many passions yeah um, even if it's not what you do on a day-to-day -day basis exactly. but yeah. there's so many things that you can do to come together mm -hmm. nurture your creative side whatever that may be so that's wonderful. yeah definitely and you avoid screen time you yes. just you just like if you can have those experiences that are focused around what they like to do the time goes really fast. Like right. if you guys are painting or, you know, if you're just whatever you're working on, that's something they're interested in. You can have like real heart to hearts. Like if it's art and they tell you it's art or like it's whales, you're doing art around whales, then you can, while everybody's kind of zoning out and doing that artwork, you can have like really great in-depth conversations with your kids. Yeah. And you're also having these like really cool memories too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been great. I love that. Um, so speaking of coming together and bringing unique personalities and interests, so process communication model, something we were talking about earlier, another integral component of Muse's um, kind of foundation or model. So tell me a bit about how your experience has been um, since you've been exposed to process communication model mm -hmm. in terms of how you communicate with your children, how you see them being communicated to at school, and how you think it's kind of enabled them to engage better with others at school, with the family, mm -hmm. um, just in general? Yeah, I think, so I have a five-year-old and two-year-old, so seeing my five-year-old take the lead in, she'll, like for example, she'll say, oh, that's not how I need to be spoken to, mm -hmm. 
like they're starting to learn how to navigate like the way you're approaching me is incorrect. And then when that understanding, when they're interacting with somebody, they can see, especially if somebody's like really emotional or distressed, like maybe that's not a good time or the, their approach on how they're interacting with each other is not correct. So just like seeing them kind of navigate that, that's definitely something that I think very few people are taught when they're children or even as adults, like most people are like not understanding, you know, boundaries or if somebody's upset, kind of back off, give them space, ask for permission to come and talk to them. Mm -hmm. So that's been interesting. And then just the different personality types uh, and their preferences on how they communicate. Uh, the kids definitely have different styles. Mm -hmm. So seeing that they kind of know what those styles are and then they're trying to identify what's the best way to communicate with people or again if they're frustrated they can let people know hey that's not how I want to be communicated with it's super interesting they're so tiny and they're already doing that I know it's amazing I cannot wait to see these kids when they are 18 plus and mm -hmm. just how successful they're going to be purely from the communication standpoint mm -hmm. um, and just understanding that others behavior whether it's friends or family or coworkers. Um, just understanding that we're different in the way that we communicate and engage and interact with the world. Right. And if for some reason there's a disparity in the way you two see things, it doesn't mean that you can't work together, be friends. Um, I think that's really beautiful. Yeah, and that's I wish amazing. that that was something that was part of my education. Right, um, yeah. So, but for sure, we all better do. late than yeah. never. With respect to our environmental pillar, um, that's really why Muse was founded first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, when Susie had this idea that she brought to Rebecca, she wanted it to be an environmental school. Um, and I know that plant, being plant-based is something that was always kind of on your mind, something that you exercised even before bringing your kids here, but I'd be so interested to hear um, how your children, even from such a young age, are becoming more aware of the environment, how that plays out in their day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. um, their experiences here with our seat to table program, um, just kind of what that's been like for you all. Yeah, definitely. So I think what we've seen, especially like kids that go here versus like kids that they interact with, I think there is definitely a big difference in like understanding where things come from, what they do, especially like especially around food and then even like interactions around animals. But I think the school does a really good job of like explaining to the kids because they get the experience it firsthand. Like mm -hmm. what is food? Where does it come from? Like it comes from our planet. There's thing, you know, there's a process around it because especially, I mean, LA is pretty aware of like food. Like there's a big food culture here, but I think in other places there are not, but the kids are starting to like understand where all this stuff is coming from. Mm -hmm. So that's really, that's that's super important but just being able to garden and mm -hmm. be like you can actually grow food and you know that's huge and they're starting to understand like nutrition and you know there's we've I think our people our age like we kind of got experimented with a little bit with like fast food and the different right. breads and like a lot of us have like these we just that's why I was like veg vegetarian and vegan and gluten free so long because there's just like these weird foods that everybody was getting experimented with. So this is a generation that's like becoming aware of that. And every, everybody kind of in society, I think, is becoming more aware of it, but the kids especially. So that's been cool. Just kind of like on the food front mm -hmm. and where food comes from and like how you interact with animals. And then separate from that nature. And this is kind of, this is the reality we live with is that, you know, like nature is beautiful. It's super powerful. It's also like dirty it's getting dirty because there's a ton of people on the planet so these kids are like you know they have love for nature which is great but they also have a sense of it is their responsibility you know sadly because there's been like a lot of generations that kind of have been naive to the fact that like their actions are impacting the planet so the kids are aware of that and they really really love nature but kind of have a sense like especially my daughter she's like oh I want to help make the planet more beautiful, mm -hmm. cleaner, you know, for other people. Yeah. So that's been good too. That's wonderful just yeah. to have her have that awareness. Mm -hmm. And again, we talked about this earlier, building her sense of self-efficacy so she knows that she can make an impact, mm -hmm. um, be it in, you know, cleaning up the ocean, like you mentioned earlier. I thought that was really um, a cool story that you shared about 
her recognizing that her oceans are dirty and she mm -hmm. wanted to do something about that. Right, yeah. Um, to be able to see that and yeah. articulate that yeah. concern at age five, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, at first it, you feel like a little sad about it. Yeah. Because right, you're like, oh, they actually, they're seeing that, you know, there's some blemishes here and there. Mm -hmm. But children are like ever optimistic. So mm -hmm. they're like, hey, we'll figure it out. But yeah, she was saying that she would like to maybe like create an invention or start a business that can help like clean the ocean. And then I was, cause that's, that's the nature and the passion kind of combined. Right. So I was, I had to forget, we were just talking about it, but a kid who's like 18, mm -hmm. who is working on inventions to like pull plastic out of the ocean. So she was saying, oh, when I grow up, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why do you have to wait till you're grown up when you're an adult? Like, let's start working on stuff maybe over the summer that can figure out how to do some of these yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. I Which is that. never a conversation I had. And right. it's, you of know, course. even going through the school, it's educating the parents on how to interact with the kids a little mm -hmm. bit more. Yeah. It's amazing how we're kind of disrupting that age old model of school, 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 and that's all you really focus on, maybe some extracurriculars, mm -hmm. and then you go to college, and then your life really starts. Mm -hmm. But it's like there's so much um, there's so much power in having looking at the world through the lens of a child, and that optimism really is powerful, mm -hmm. um, particularly when they're in an environment like this, when they're told they can really pursue whatever it is they want to do and whatever they're passionate in. Yeah. Um, just cultivating this very empowered group of future leaders that are going to be um, kind of guiding the future of our world. Um, it seems like such a vast idea, but it's true and it's happening now. Yeah, definitely. Um, through Muse and it's it's very exciting to yeah, totally. just think about how it's going to play out. Mm -hmm. So in that vein, talking about just Muse in the scope of the globe itself, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in terms of any parents or prospective Muse Global owners that are interested in pursuing a Muse Global school, mm -hmm. um, opening up a school in their own community. Um, what is it about your experience here as a Muse parent that you feel has, has impacted your children the most um, and stood out to you mm -hmm. in the four years you've been here? Yeah, I can just, yeah, comparing it against the school system that I went through, LASD, that's mm -hmm. pushing so many kids through this like old broken system and then seeing, you know, really choosing the school as a parent and then just saying, no, that's not going to be the path for my kids. Mm -hmm. I think one, like, especially when the kids are little, they're, they, like, those are the most important years. Mm -hmm. So really um, planting these seeds of, like, all the different pillars in the, the, the kids is huge. And also it's, it's educating the parents around them. And that's having a ripple effect, you know, with exactly. the kids that they're interacting with, the parents that the other parents are interacting with. So I think that's really cool. I just think all the conversations are more nuanced now with the kids, a five-year-old talking to an adult, being able to kind of express like what's going on with their emotions. And obviously they're not like t fully equipped where they can handle it, but neither are a lot of adults that I interact with. Like Absolutely. when they get emotionally charged, like it turns into a fight in a big situation. So it's like, you know, even though the adults are bigger and older and they have jobs, it's like the school is creating a respect around the children around like their future and giving them the tools super early on yeah. and you know like where adults are like not figuring out boundaries even still you know I'm still learning them mm -hmm. at 37 but the kids are starting to understand the nuance start to articulate it and respect that I think it's just like you're really molding little independent adults at such an early age and it's gonna this is their foundation so if they want to go to school they want to go to college or they don't they want to do a startup or they don't whatever they they do, they're going to have these things built into them. Yeah. So I think for that reason alone, it's so huge and so important. Yeah. And I think parents love it. Yeah, just um, thinking about kids at such a young age, starting early childhood, which is essentially 2.3 years, yeah. um, teaching them that they have agency over themselves, the planet, um, whatever it is they want to do in their life, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just ushering them through yeah. um, a established system that really leaves not a lot of room for creativity um, yeah I think it's it's something very exciting and it's not necessarily for everyone but our hope is that by sharing more about what it is we do and the many facets of the Muse Global 
model that um, we can just start, like you said, creating a ripple effect mm -hmm. of consciousness. Yeah. Um, that there, we can do more for our kids, and we should do more. Yeah, definitely. It definitely pays dividends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think all of through all of the different things that they're learning, they're really like I think agency is the right word for it. Mm -hmm. they, they're getting, they're learning that a lot sooner in all these different mm -hmm. avenues. And so through that, they're just able to be more thoughtful. They're able to be more present, and yeah, just like really have a like a meaningful like existence and meaningful interactions with mm -hmm. people and the things around them. Absolutely. So yeah, it's been cool. Couldn't have said it better myself. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. thank you, David. Thank you. It's been wonderful, and I can't wait to see um, Willow and Arrow just take off and do amazing things. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.